welcome students to the next topic which is also a very important that is the peripheral nerve injuries the peripheral nerve injuries are mostly in the upper limb or lower limb the common ones are one is the axial nerve the other peripheral nerves are the radial nerve the median nerve the ulna nerve and the common peroneal nerve let's go first to the classification of the peripheral nerves the important classification is the Siddons classification. Must know the three headings that is the neuropraxia, the axontomesis, and neurontomesis. They are the three main parts of the classification. The neuropraxia is usually where there is compression injury and there is local conduction block and demyelination which occurs. Secondly, in axontomesis, usually there is traction injury where there is a pull on the nerve but may occur after severe compression also. In this, valerian degeneration occurs. While lastly, in neurontomesis, is complete severance, that is the whole nerve is cut uh, and the whole nerve trunk is affected. There is no chance of recovery unless the repair is undertaken immediately. Neuropraxia, axontomesis and neurontomesis, where the severity is much more in neurontomesis and least in neuropraxia. Coming to the etiology of the peripheral nerve injuries it can be affection because of metabolic it can be because of collagen disease malignancies toxins thermal and mechanical injuries the mechanical causes producing peripheral primary injury includes laceration that is a cut fracture fracture manipulation and gunshot wounds clinically diagnosis of peripheral nerve and assessment post nerve injury is very important what what do you check you must check the motor function, what is the tone of the muscle, the power. Second is if there is muscle wasting is clear indication of a nerve injury. The sensation, so you must know all the dermatomes involvement overall in the body. The autonomic function is must, that is there is loss of sweating, pilomotor response and vasomotor action when the peripheral nerve is disrupted. Hoffman uh, devised this sign known as the Tinnel sign way back in 1970 where you ask, it's a clinical test, you ask the person to keep his hand straight and with your finger you keep tapping from distal to proximal. So you keep on tapping and ask the patient whether he is getting any tingling or numbness which is usually there and if there is sudden it gives a sign of like a you can say current usually the patient says in that his form and lastly the reflexes the reflexes are very very important to check in the upper limb as well as the lower limb coming to the management is in the fresh nerve injuries arterial bone and joint repair take precedence over nerve so you must treat the arterial or vascularity is very very important that must be treated joint repair must be done and then you can think of the nerve injury. So, ABC of nerve injuries or the injuries must be taken care of. The patient should be overall fine first. Taking care of the open wounds or compound wounds, you must do a good thorough wash and debridement. Dressing and temporary splintage should be done. The management as usual is in conservative and operative form. In the conservative treatment, the aim is to preserve the mobility of the limb when while the nerve recovers and spleen to relax the whole muscle it also gives relief of pain is very important physiotherapy is must and even the skin care so that there are no ulcers which are formed later coming to the operative treatment or management of the peripheral nerves primary and secondary repair is done this technique is commonly the epineural perineural raphi is done the epineural is the epi is the outermost layer, peri is below that. Then the mobilization of the nerve, if you have to do, sometimes trunk grafting is also done. Commonly done thing is the neurolysis. That is because the fibrous tissue around the nerve causes compression, you must do a release of this external as well as internal. So the perineural as well as the int intraneural fibrosis is removed. Reconstructive surgeries are also done. There are tendon transfers which are done, muscle transfers, 
and arthrodesis is the one of the last procedures where the fusion is done in a functional position last but not the least is the amputation rarely done for the anesthetic or causalgia but always try to save the limb coming to another integral part of the peripheral injuries it is the brachial plexus injury the brachial plexus injury uh, anatomy is very very important and i would recommend you all to refer to the anatomy books for the brachial plexus anatomy which is very essential before going to that and any of them could also come as a mcq point coming to the mechanism of injury for this brachial plexus is traction or overstretching is one of the most important that is forcible widening of interval of the shoulder and head during some labor when the child is delivering there could be a sudden pull on the child that could cause stretch of the nerves stretch edema that is leading to also the edema surrounding causes loss of conductivity temporary to a complete tear there could be a fluid which is filled up compression in the form of if there's a fracture clavicle there are very important neurovascular structures there it could be because of some sw swelling in the form of tumor and scar which also causes puckering the other is the penetrating wounds which is another form of injury coming to important palsies which are affection of the peripheral nerves is the obstetric palsy that is also known as herb's palsy the herb's palsy is the junction of the fifth and sixth cervical root the cervical is the uppermost part of the spine this is affecting the c5 and c6 root which is very important that is known also as the herb's point so c5 c6 is to be remembered there is paralysis of the abductor muscles and external rotators of the shoulder elbow flexors and supinators of the forearm so classically it gives a, a deformity where the person's hand is adducted and internally rotated it almost looks like a waiter step or policeman step is also known as coming to the palsies that is the clumpage paralysis that is the lower part of the brachial plexus is affected that is the c8 and t1 root is affected that can come in the mcqs also so you must know that herb's palsy is c5 c6 while clumpage is c8 and t1 there is a classical claw hand deformity seen in clumpage and horner syndrome is also associated the horner syndrome is having characteristic of one ptosis that is drooping of the eyelid meiosis is constriction of the pupils anhydrosis that is lack of sweat there is also anophthalmos where the eyeball is sucked into the socket and lastly is the loss of ciliospinal reflex coming to the treatment part the upper limb is placed in 90 degrees of abduction with 60 to 90 degrees of external rotation and 90 degrees of flexion at the elbow forearm goes into supination wrist is in dorsiflexion in herb's palsy so these are the functional position it is kept in while in clumpage paralysis the upper limb is adducted and there is a cockup splint which is given in the hand the cockup splint is usually given on the volar aspect and the hand is in this position so that is how the cockup splint is given physiotherapy is important massaging the muscles and preserving the tone of the muscles is essential in recovery coming to a few operations which are commonly done is one is the fairbanks procedure must just know about it it's not very very important but in fairbanks there is insertion of pectoralis major muscle and uh, the subscapularis is section anterior capsule of the shoulder is divided while the second procedure is the severs procedure which is a modification of the fairbanks just avoid opening of the capsule is done other operations are osteotomy of the humerus to correct the internal rotation deformity arthrodesis in the end of the shoulder that is fusion arthrodesis of the elbow also can be done and finally there are hand procedures for reconstruction which is done in the end these are the common now the nerve injuries and its effects is a very very important slide i would like you to have a look to this it's divided into the nerve uh, affected the trauma involved and the effects which are seen let's come one by one to each nerve first is the axillary nerve this occurs because of trauma that is anterior dislocation of the shoulder 
if the shoulder joint is anterior displaced it causes compression of the axillary nerve and the effects are there is the deltoid muscles the deltoid muscles which are there on the shoulder it becomes paralyzed and it causes even a flat shoulder second nerve is the radial nerve this commonly affects because of shaft of the humerus so the radial nerve comes to the radial groove and this classically gives a wrist drop this is known as the wrist drop thirdly is the median nerve is uh, more associated with the supracondylar fracture humerus classically it gives the pointing index the hand and finger thumb becomes almost like this like a pointing index is formed and there is wasting of the thenar muscles these are your thenar muscles and this is your hypothenar muscles so classically in median nerve you get thenar muscle wasting coming to the fourth nerve is the ulna nerve there is fracture medial epicondyle of the humerus which is involved classical deformity or effects is the claw hand classically the person presents with the claw hand wasting of the hypothenar muscles and the introsha muscle which are in between whichever the nerves are supplying the muscles those once you know that is affected and you know the anatomy well you will know what is the deformity and what are the muscles are affected coming to the fifth nerve which is the sciatic nerve that is commonly seen in posterior dislocation of the hip joint classically you see a foot drop when the person is walking the foot becomes completely plantar flexed in usually there is in plantigrade position but the person has to make an effort while walking because it gets stamping of the foot and he gets a high stepping gait classically there is also great wasting of the gastrocnemius or the calf muscles coming to the last that is the common peroneal nerve it's commonly seen in the uh, knee dislocation and fracture neck of fibula very very commonly done when there is a fracture neck of fibula you must always suspect a common peroneal nerve affection which is going on the lateral side and this also gives a effect of a foot drop these are very very important effects and what nerve is related to you must keep in mind because that can definitely come as a mcq question to you coming to one by one the nerves which are important is the radial nerve it innervates a mnemonic called best that is brachioradialis b e stands for extensors of the wrist and the fingers a stands for supinator and t stands for triceps so you can remember this it uh, radial nerve innervates best that is brachioradialis extensors of the wrist and fingers supinator and triceps it is also called as the great ex extensor nerve and these injuries lead to wrist drop also commonly involved are the crutch palsy or known as saturday night palsy this uh, crutch palsy is commonly because the patients who are using crutches it causes compression at that area secondly saturday night palsy it comes from the word usually it's a story when on saturday night many people go out and drink and they keep their arm outstretched and the edge of the chair is getting compressed at the crutch level or the point where the radial nerve can be easily compressed that is why it's known as the saturday night palsy coming to the median nerve the palsies tested by this are one is the pointing index also known as oschner's clasping test it can come to know you ask the person to hold his both his hands immediately the index finger comes up upright that is classically the oschner's class test which is done second is the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus muscle of the index fingers are paralyzed a very simple test is the pen test ask the person you keep a pen up and ask the person to adduct and try to touch the pen on top he won't be able to do if the median nerve is affected these test the abductor pollicis brevis and classical uh, deformity which is seen in median nerve is the ape thumb that is the classical simian deformity like seen in apes so you must remember all these important points related to median nerve we come to the end of the peripheral nerve injuries session thank you